Hi, I'm George. Welcome to my YouTube channel and thanks for joining me for another plein air painting. So today I'm here in Hyde Park Corner and behind me is the Wellington Monument. And I'm going to be painting this. I like how uh, we've got quite a blue sky and then a lot of reflected light going into the shadows of the monument. And then on this corner you've got some of that sunlight hitting it. So I always love painting the contrast between sunlight and areas in shadow, especially when I'm outdoors and you get lovely blue cast to the shadows and quite a warm glow to the areas in sunlight. So I find that really fun to paint. Uh, my friend Patrick Jackson, he's going to be painting as well. He's going to be painting the war memorial. So anyway, let's get into this video. Remember to subscribe to my channel and let's start painting. I'm painting on a gesso primed panel, which is toned to a grayish brown. And I'm using raw umber paint to sketch in the structure of the monument. As I sketch in this structure, I'm checking how the width relates to the height and I'm constantly comparing these relationships between the height and the width in order to draw the proportions of the building accurately and to avoid making it too tall or too wide. I'm also paying very close attention to the angles of the top, bottom and sides of this cube-like structure as drawing these lines at the correct angles will enable me to accurately depict the perspective of the building. I'm now mixing in the sky using a mix of titanium white, cerulean blue and a touch of raw umber. And as the sky gets higher on the painting, I add some more ultramarine blue into this color mix, making the sky a slightly deeper blue as it goes higher up on the painting. I'm now painting the statue on top of the arch, which is known as the Quadriga. And the sculpture depicts Nike, the goddess of victory, on a chariot with four horses in front of her and she's raising her arm in the air, holding a laurel wreath, which is a symbol of victory. This wasn't actually the first sculpture which was erected on top of the arch. The first sculpture was actually a huge horse with the Duke of Wellington sitting on top and it weighed 40 tons so it was a huge, huge sculpture on top of the arch and it wasn't actually very popular, people thought it didn't look too good. It ended up getting taken down and then this more intricate sculpture was put up in its place which I think looks really nice. Here I'm painting the side of the monument which is in shadow and it has a slightly blue hue to it due to the reflected light that it's receiving from the sky. I'm now painting in the side of the monument which is in light and I'm making a mix of mostly titanium white but with a small touch of raw umber and Naples yellow just to give this section a slightly warm glow as sunlight being a warm light and this also separates it nicely from the coolness of the shadow so it gives these lights a real pop. So I'm now going into the shadow section of the monument and painting in some variation in color temperature and value as well as even though this general side this general section is all in shadow certain areas are receiving more light than others as some areas are poking out or facing down and there is quite a bit of variation especially as the object is a white building and the light of the object that you're painting the more intricacies and color and value variations you'll be able to notice when you look into the shadows. The 
The Wellington Arch was built between 1825 and 1827 and it was originally intended as an outer entrance to Buckingham Palace and it was actually deconstructed and moved to the spot where it stands now today in the 1880s. And it's had a few different practical uses over its history as well. For example, the left side of the arch served as a ventilation shaft for the Piccadilly Road Tunnel, which runs completely underneath the monument and is now no longer in use. And also in the 1950s, it was used as a police station and it was London's smallest police station. And of course, it also serves as a memorial celebrating the Duke of Wellington's victory in the Battle of Waterloo over Napoleon. To paint this tree behind the building, I start by painting down the shadow sections using a mix of dark green and I then go in on top of this with a lighter mix which is a lighter green but also slightly warmer in colour temperature to paint the section of the tree in light. Just using these two values I'm able to create the effect of a three-dimensional tree with sections of light and shadow. And now I've painted in the grass in the foreground and also some of these autumn leaves which have fallen off the surrounding trees. And here I'm just painting in some clouds on top of this blue sky. And I'm using them as a compositional tool to point in towards the monument. So they're leading the viewer's eye into the focal point of the painting which is this monument in the center. Here I'm painting in a few figures into this painting as we are in central London and there are a lot of people walking through this arch all the time, no matter what time of day. And also a nice thing about adding these figures in is it gives a sense of scale, just how large and monumental the Wellington Arch is. I hope you enjoyed that video, if you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Instagram at George Frederick Thomas. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.